Alrighty, so we are right at noon. So welcome, welcome everybody as you're popping in with us over your lunch hour. So you, this is the third installment of our Eat Fresh, Eat Local series and what to expect at the farmer's market by University of Illinois Extension. Um, we're gonna get going, like I said, it's noon, but before we start, we do ask to make sure your microphone is muted. And that's basically to prevent any type of background sounds during the presentation and to make sure that your camera is turned off. And we say to ask you to do that mainly because of bandwidth, because if a lot of people have cameras on, it slows us down a little bit. So we really, really appreciate if you turn off your camera for us, um, please. And also the chat box, so a little bit more on housekeeping. If you have a question, feel free to enter it right into that chat box and we'll have Mary Liz answer them all at the end of her presentation. So for those who don't know, the University of Illinois Extension is the flagship outreach for the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Extension offers research-based educational programs to residents of Illinois in all 102 of our counties and far beyond that. So each month, our web pages of U of I actually draw more than 5 million page views. More than 200 countries have accessed Extension's web-based information. So my name is Lisa Peterson, and I'm your moderator today. I'm a nutrition and wellness educator um, located in Christian, Jersey, McCoupin, and Montgomery counties in West Central Illinois. And Mary Liz, our speaker today, or our presenter, is also a nutrition and wellness educator on our team. And she is serving in Clark, Crawford, and Edgar counties on the east side of the state. Uh, Mary Liz has over 20 years of experience with Extension, and we are super excited to pass it on off to her. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Lisa. And uh, as Lisa said, we're, we're thrilled that you have decided to join us today. And, and we're hoping to give you some information that perhaps you hadn't thought about before or some new tips or tricks to, to shopping at the farmer's market. Um, I do want to give you fair warning. Uh, my middle daughter is at the hospital right now having a baby. <laughs> so if I pause, that means I'm answering a very important phone call. I think it should be after our webinar, but just in case, I wanted to let you know that. I'm going to stop my video now so that we can go right on with the information part of our webinar. So why shop at the farmer's market? Well, I think some of the things that we were discussing prior to um, our starting said it very well, that we shop at the, market, at the market because it's fresh, it's healthy, it's fun. And then something that you might not have known is that it's really good for the local economy. So again, why shop? Well, you know, you know your dentist, you know your doctor, but do you know your farmer? And that leads us to this video from the USDA, I'd, I'd really like to share it with you today. And um, it explains a little bit more and it shows you some really good pictures of, uh, of a farmer's market. Okay, can you see that now? No, we cannot. <laughs> and I can't either, so hang on. For some reason it just shifted and now all I see are your, all of your faces. <laughs> so let's do this. I'm going to stop and it won't even let me. How about now? When I go Can to a farmer's market, I know I might come across the best greens or apples or peaches that I've ever had. What kind of advice do you think? I do the same thing. When I say stop, share, it just goes to all of your faces. Hmm. Let's see if we can't. Can you share your YouTube screen? Let's see. It's just not allowing me to share anything. Oh, good grief. And I practice this like three times. <laughs> okay, let's. The video was going. We could hear it. We just couldn't see mm -hmm. it. And of course, the... okay, we're going to try this again. Okay, so, and you can hear it now probably, right? I'm really faint, but we can't see okay. anything. Now this is interesting because it's not, there we go. Okay, it will not, hang on, maybe I can pull it up. It's 
not showing me an option to share. Let's see. Yeah, maybe. Let's see. Can you see anything? There it is. Yep. There it is. Oh. When I go to a farmer's market, I know I might come across the best greens or apples or peaches that I've ever had. What kind of advice do you think you would give people who have never shopped at a farmer's market before? Yeah. Talk to the farmer behind the table. Ask them any question, they'll be glad to answer. Sweet bell peppers are an excellent source of vitamins A and C. Um, these deeply colored fruits and vegetables are a wonderful thing to incorporate into a healthy diet. For the kids. To me, that makes food shopping here an adventure, and I'm not alone. Here I can get meat and eggs and fruit and vegetables. I can speak directly to the farmer. I can ask him or her questions about what they're doing and why. Right. And we have a relationship. It gives us a greater connection with our environment, both the physical, natural environment and our social, economic environment. There's something really incredible about knowing where your food is being sourced. So much of it is really the interpersonal connection. It's knowing who's growing your food and seeing the love and the energy and the attention that they've put into what you're tasting. Here, the produce is seasonal and picked at the peak of freshness. So you get to enjoy local fruits and vegetables when they're at their very best. I think everybody likes to shop in the markets because they can get a good value at the farmer's market and everything we have to offer is fresh. What's one of your favorite things about buying seasonal fruits and vegetables? Oh, the taste, definitely the taste. The you taste. can taste the difference. And a lot of the guys will say, we just picked this, you know, last night. We were out picking, and I'm like, oh my god, this came right from your farm. It's great to know that what you're getting is, is fresh. You know it's going to be really, really good. And you know that you're directly supporting farmers. I just wanted to give you a little bit of, a, of an intro for that. And we heard several times about why they liked to shop because it was fresh, it was better. And um, I liked the pictures that showed uh, the different vegetables and, and the people shopping. So now. Okay, and now I'm having trouble. We just saw the slides and then they popped away from they us. They popped away. Okay, let's <laughs> see if this will show. There's big numbers coming up on my screens and not that I've ever seen before. And then that went away. There we go. Can you see it now? Yep. Okay, because my, my two screens both now look totally different. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, wait, Patty, weren't we just talking about how wonderful technology was? <laughs> and now it's not allowing me to advance the slides. What do you see now? Watch this video from USDA. Okay. Let's now, do you see a new screen? Yep. Yes. All right. So to quote our uh, Illinois Department of Agriculture Director, Jerry Costello, if there is one silver lining to 2020, it's how aware we have become about where our food comes from. And we saw that in the video and we heard the people talking about how they, they knew where it was coming from. And, and uh, the one uh, customer was, was just fascinated that, that uh, they were saying, well, the farmer told me they had just picked this you know, the night before. And, and that's not something that uh, we get if we stop, if we shop in a grocery store. So a few numbers about farmers markets. In 2019, there were 8,140 farmers markets in the United States. And on an average market day, 916 households shopped and spent $14,547. So that's, a, that's quite a bit of money. And it's good to know, and I'm pretty proud of this fact that Illinois is third in the nation 
for the number of farmers markets. So we all have a, a wonderful opportunity and, and uh, fairly easy access to a farmer's market in our area. So the question we are asked repeatedly is, the produce from the farmer's market more nutritious? Well, in a word, yes. Uh, the reason being is that just what we, what we talked about a minute ago is that the produce has been harvested very recently. It's had a very short travel time to the farmer's market. And all of those things are important if you want to preserve the nutrients. So what about the grocery store produce? Well, fruits and vegetables purchased at the grocery store have traveled an average of 1,500 miles from farm to store. And on that journey, the produce may have lost up to 45% of its nutritional value, namely vitamins, um, uh, particularly the, the water-soluble vitamins that are, that are uh, degraded by sunlight and temperature. And so when we're talking about purchasing broccoli, for example, in the winter, you know that you're not going to be getting the full nutritional value of that broccoli that you would get at the farmer's market. Um, in fact, we in Extension recommend in the off season, buying frozen or canned fruits and vegetables simply because they are processed at their peak of nutritional value. And so it is important to pay attention. If you don't have a farmer's market in your area, you can buy things in season in your grocery store, uh, hoping that they've been, been uh, uh, purchased a little um, closer than the 1500 mile average. Um, I often joke with people and say, have you ever taken a cross country road trip in a car? By the time you get there, you're exhausted, right? Well, think of the same thing with your fruits and vegetables. The shorter the distance from farm to consumer, the more nutritious that item is going to be. Economics 101, for every dollar spent, at the grocery store, the farmer's going to get about 16 cents. But if you spend your dollar at the farmer's market, they will get the entire dollar. And so then what does that do for our local economy? Now, this is kind of an old statistic, but it's the most recent study that I could find uh, about Illinois. And Ken Meter is, is an economist, and he did a study and found that if a family purchases 15% of their food budget from local farmers, it results in a, a huge, look at that number, $639 million increase in the central Illinois economy. And again, a, a more national uh, statistic is that for every million dollars in revenue, direct market farms create almost 32 local jobs, whereas the larger wholesalers create only 10.5 jobs. And so it is indeed good for the local economy. There's also that story, and the more research I did, it, it, did, I, it was unfounded, but, but we like to say that a dollar spent locally will circulate in your local uh, community six or seven times. We'd like to believe that. I couldn't find any credence to it, but, but that is a, an, another thing to think about. Your local farmer, he's going to be purchasing gasoline in your local economy. He's going to be uh, paying land taxes, and, and it goes round and round and so that everyone benefits. So nutritionally, good for the economy, all the way around. So more, por uh, more to the point of this webinar is, what should you expect to find at your farmer's market? Well, what have you seen at your market? Have you seen anything that surprised you? You know, uh, we know we are going to go and see fresh fruits and vegetables, but quite often we see baked goods, meats, eggs, we shared a little bit about flowers earlier. Sometimes there are non-food craft items, jewelry, uh, homemade dog treats. So, so if you wanna just take a minute and share with us something unusual that you have seen at the farmer's market. So anyone seen anything? Or you can just unmute yourself and tell us. Oh, a knife sharpener, oh, good idea. All right, cutting boards, uh, home, uh, handcrafted probably, yeah. Pet food, pea sprouts, oh, wow. That sounds good. I've, I've seen garlic scapes, which are you know kind of a, a sprout in itself. Breads and soaps, Pos oh, pastas, craft soda, interesting. 
Very good. So, so you know that you're uh, quite often you're going to get a surprise when you make that trip to your local farmer's market. Now, when you go, how should you prepare? Well, uh, you might check your local newspaper and social media for types of produce to be offered. If you have gone once and you, you know a particular farmer, uh, you might wanna look for them on Facebook because quite often they'll post just before the, before the market what they're bringing to town. And so you can kind of get ready and anticipate what you might want to purchase. Bring cash. Now, many uh, farmer's markets uh, vendors use the, the credit card machines, um, but not all. And so it's much more convenient to bring cash. Many of them also are taking the EBT um, vouchers or coupons from, from the health department. And uh, those are also really good to use sometimes. Um, they'll even be uh, doubled in, in some areas. And so then you can get a lot of produce uh, for a small amount of uh, cash value in that voucher. A reusable bag is good. Don't count on the farmer to be supplying grocery bags. Uh, stroll the entire market before you buy. Uh, there might be a couple of different vendors selling the same thing. And so you might want to look and see which one looks better for you. So, so just you know, take a stroll, kind of uh, look the place over and see what you might want to purchase. Dress appropriately. Wear comfortable shoes. You're going to be walking. And lastly, don't overbuy. You can come back next week. The sad thing would be if you if you purchased more produce than you could eat or and you didn't want to preserve it or didn't have time and you ended up throwing it away. What a shame that would be. Uh, some more advice. When should you go? Well, if you're looking for the best quality or the most recently in season, like the very first berries of the season or sweet corn or tomatoes, then you want to arrive early and get there uh, before all the other shoppers have, have picked things over. Now, if you're looking for bargains or you want to buy in bulk, come late. Farmers don't want to pack up the produce that they brought to town. So by arriving just before closing time, you may get a bargain. The farmer might even make a deal if you're wanting to can green beans or, or what have you. Uh, he might sell you a, a bushel or two uh, just so that he doesn't have to put it back into his truck and take it home. And so those are your two strategies. Arrive early for the, for the best quality and uh, come late for the bargains. Know your season. Uh, probably uh, one of the most annoying things for farmers is when um, customers come to them in May or June asking for tomatoes. Well, in Illinois, uh, the vast majority of Illinois tomatoes come on uh, in July and August and September. And that's when they're at their peak. If you're finding tomatoes um, in your farmer's market earlier than that, they might have been raised in a greenhouse, which is fine, but you're not going to get that field ready, vine ripened tomato taste uh, in May or pumpkins in July. Do not expect the, the, the produce to be uniform in size. And you're going to get those perfectly shaped round tomatoes or, or pears or what have you at the grocery store. And we all know that taste can be inferior. So go for the naturally shaped fruits that you're going to find, fruits and veggies you're going to find at the farmer's market, and you will also find them to be superior in taste. Try something new. Heirloom varieties are not often found in the supermarket. They might look a little different, but the taste is often superb. You know, uh, the, the darker uh, tomatoes, the striped tomatoes, um, their, their flavor is absolutely outstanding in particular with what you uh, can compare it to uh, purchased in the grocery store, those, those round, fuzzy, hard, sort of Frankenstein tomatoes, we might want to call them. So anyway, uh, to learn more, go to the Illinois Department of Ag, uh, illinois.gov, and you can find out um, quite a bit more. When we watched the video, it told us several times to talk to the farmers. Many are passionate about what they're growing. They would love to have a conversation with you. Ask them how to prepare some of the, some of the produce that's unfamiliar uh, with you. Don't be shy, engage them in a conversation. Have any of you uh, done, done just that? I'll check the chat box again and see 
uh, if you've had some interesting conversation with some of the, the farmers market vendors, those farmers, what have you learned from them? I'll give you a minute or so. Oh, some farmers are offended when I ask if it's organic, right? Uh, the organic certification process is kind of a, an arduous task. And if it were organic, they would probably have the, the signage uh, prominently displayed. Um, and, you know, maybe engage in a conversation with them and say, if they say they're not organic, ask them uh, why. And, and you might be able to, to build a, a relationship over that. I know I always like to ask where the produce is from and how long they've been doing a certain thing or did they try something new this year? Um, oh, local honey, yes, yes, excellent. Uh, ask them what additives are in the soil, okay? And so what is their fertilizing um, regime? Yeah, right, yeah, good point, good point, excellent, all right. So now I wanna spend just a couple of minutes talking about food safety. We all know about hand washing. Boy, by golly, that's something we learned this year. And what we want to remind everyone is, is that you don't always, you don't just have to wash your hands uh, after you uh, touch the produce, but we also want you to wash your hands beforehand. So before you go to the farmer's market, before you're handling all that produce, wash your hands because Whatever is on your hands, if you haven't washed them, whatever bacteria is there, it's going to be transferred to every piece of produce that you touch. So the hand washing deal is a before and after rule. What about our produce? Well, I was going to uh, show you a, a video about how to wash leafy greens, but I'm not because that was such a hard thing to do. But what we want you to understand is that we only want to wash the produce just before we're going to eat it or prepare it. And the reason for that is if we wash everything uh, when we get home from the market, for example, and we leave things wet, there is a chance for if there was any trace of bacteria left, uh, bacteria like a moist environment and they could multiply on the surface of that produce. So we're, we're gonna um, go ahead and refrigerate it, wrap it in a, in a paper towel and, and put it in your refrigerator and then wash it just before you use it. Even if you plan to peel something, wash it. Um, because so let's say uh, cantaloupe, for example, if you don't scrub that rind really well under running water to wash it, and you force a knife down into the flesh, if there was bacteria on that rind, the blade of your knife is going to force it into uh, the flesh of that cantaloupe, and then you would have bacteria on the part that you're going to eat. Now we don't recommend any commercial kind of washes that you can purchase at the, at the uh, store. Uh, running water and a nice stiff brush will work just as well. And again, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat box. We wanna make sure that we're refrigerating cut or peeled fruits and vegetables within two hours of preparation. And any of our uh, more delicate uh, fruits or vegetables, we need to get those in the refrigerator as soon as we get home to preserve their nutritional value and, and their freshness. So any leafy greens, peppers, cucumbers, that sort of thing. What we don't want to put into the refrigerator are tomatoes. Definitely don't refrigerate the tomatoes unless uh, they've been cut. A couple of other tips. Uh, it's best to purchase cider that has been pasteurized. If the cider is not pasteurized, uh, make sure it's chilled, but do not serve unpasteurized cider uh, to anyone who is immune compromised. So the elderly, the very young, uh, women who are pregnant or people who are taking medications that have compromised their immune system. Uh, most of the ciders you're gonna see in the farmer's market have been pasteurized, but I just wanted to kind of give you that heads up. Eggs that are sold should be chilled at 45 degrees. Uh, ask to look inside the carton, make sure the eggs are clean and not cracked. And if you're purchasing meat, keep the meat cold in a cooler. Uh, make sure if you're, if you're purchasing several different things, bring two, cool two coolers if you know you're gonna be purchasing meat. Although many of them are vacuum sealed, 
you don't want to risk the chance of meat juices getting on, let's say the, the lettuce or the, or the uh, grapes that you're going to be eating um, without cooking. So uh, make sure we're keeping those separate so no meat juices um, are um, allowed to get on any other kind of food. And oh, I just wanted to go over one more thing that I did not mention here is that if you're purchasing eggs or, or meat, make sure they're coming from a vendor that has been inspected and certified. And uh, they should have a placket. Uh, if you'll notice the meats in this, you can see that they've been stamped. And so just, just look for that sort of thing. Uh, usually the farmer's market manager will, will make sure that everyone who is a vendor has been certified if, if they're selling eggs or meat, but um, you need to be a savvy uh, customer as well. So pay attention to those things. And then in conclusion, you can find a farmer's market by again, going to that Illinois.gov and uh, just put in the search uh, bar, finding a farmer's market and uh, you can click on your county and it will um, show you exactly where the farmer's markets are near you. So we'll, we'll check the chat box for questions or if you have any questions, we can answer them now. But I want to let you know that next month, right in season at the height of food preservation time, we are going to be presenting a webinar uh, about preserving your food. So Preserve Like a Pro will uh, come to us July 21st at noon. And uh, please register for that and, and join us for that. Uh, interesting and timely topic. I think we're going to put in the chat box um, a survey for today's lesson, or it might come via email. And then we also have a handout that we're going to be putting in the chat box. Am I right, Lisa, or am I making this stuff up? Nope, you got it. And I put the survey right in the chat box. You did have one question. Okay, good. Make sure we reiterate it. Um, is, it better, is it better organic fruits and vegetables? than regular ones at the market and why. So I think okay. she's thinking is okay. better than regular. Right, we do get this question quite a bit and it depends on your point of view. If you're strictly talking about nutritional value and they've had the, the fruits and vegetables have had the same um, time period between field to market, then nutritional value studies have shown that organic produce is no more nutritious than the conventionally raised produce. If you're concerned about traces of uh, both pesticides and herbicides or what have you on the fruits and vegetables, then of course you would prefer the organic. I hope that answers your question. Wonderful. And I also put, like Mary Liz says, I just put that survey into the chat box and you will have access. I'm glad you asked, can we have access to the recording? Absolutely. So we will get Great. that, I believe in the follow-up email Otherwise, I just shared, and that one opens clickable, but if you go to illinois.edu, let me quick get the better link there, but that we do have all of our recordings for all of our previous webinars. But once we get this one loaded, we're going to send it out for everyone who registered. Right. And you can find the link to uh, the next webinar. It's, it's on the slides there, goillinois.edu, eat fresh, eat local, or just go to our Illinois Extension website. And um, there's a a panel on the left hand side and it'll say I, I believe it's news and events or something like that isn't it Lisa or upcoming oh. webinars and I'm working on it right now and I will get you guys the direct link to register here okay perfect I'm looking the there's chat. another there's another question that says most farmers try to do as close to organic as possible I'll agree just a difficult and expensive paper trail absolutely yeah yes yes Yes. Yeah. And again, please join us next month. And for, you're going to do the overview of all of our preservation. And like I said, all of our resources for preservation are on our website as well. But yeah, please join us next month on July 21st at same time, noon. <laughs> yes. Same, same bat time, same bat station, right? <laughs> Am I aging myself there? All right. Any other questions? I think we are right at 1230. That's what we were hoping for. Yeah. So if there are no other questions, we thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, if you ever have any other questions, contact your local extension office. You know, really, that's what we're here for. We're here to, to, to serve you, to answer your questions, to share good factual information with you. And um, 
we hope that you get out and enjoy this beautiful day. Oh, and yes, thank you. Good luck with the baby. Yeah. Yes. I've been checking my phone like every two seconds. I don't have anything on there yet. So oh, I was gonna ask you. Go. <laughs> oh, good. thank you so very much. Yep. Thank you, everybody. And yes, please join us next month and wait for the follow-up email. <laughs> very good. Thank you. Bye-bye.